Rashawn Lynch, everybody. Hey, give it up for Dana Christensen one more time. Yes. Dana Christensen, my pal Frankie Vera. Dig up the lawn, all the talented people you see tonight. Please give them some applause. My God. All right, folks, you asked for it. You wanted to see what Drew Carey would look like if he was doing a bad impression of Johnny Cash at his own funeral. Ta da! It's great. We're all here to pay uh, to pay homage to the great baseball player Bud Fowler. Here he is. Uh, when I did the amazing American, amazing ball player. Uh, when I was casting the actor who uh, Kirby Darius, who did an amazing job tonight doing the Bud Fowler monologue, we give him another round of applause. He was fantastic. And when we were going through the actors and we were trying to select who would be best, you know, one of my producers was like, I don't know, he's a little darker skinned than he, the other guy, and then I want a lighter skin. I just thought, guys, no, we want the best actor, and that guy was the best actor. So let's just go with the best actor, who is Kirby Darius. That's the way you go. This guy, I don't know if I, because here's the thing, I didn't know if I was sold on the look, even though we were supposed to cast accordingly. Because really, it, it, according to this photo, Bud Fowler looked like uh, looked like uh, Carlton from Fresh Prince of Bel Air. He was playing <laughs> Super Mario in a in a movie. Do 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 do. Racism? No. Um, which is cool. I I also love this stage. I play here once a year because Alan is a a dear producer and a, and a good friend of mine. The thing that I like most about the stage is that it looks like somebody decided to make uh, like an MTV show called Pimp My Bingo Parlor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, screw that. I know. They're, they're poor, yeah, we're going to put some we're gonna put some lights in there, get a couple of strippers singers. Oh, yeah, the next thing you know, it's going to be amazing. And it is. I'm living the dream. Folks, two years ago, I was playing the Hollywood Improv. And now I'm in Fort Maine. Yeah. Because when you love life, life loves you back. I, uh, I'm just curious, man. What happened to the dude with the long gray hair and the brown fringe jacket? Where'd he go? I swear to God. Oh, he's in the back, man. I wish he could come out because I saw that guy in rainbow shot out of my ass. I was so happy. I remember just, I was hoping he was sitting here because I just wanted to look that guy directly in the face and say, if God doesn't look exactly like you when I die, I will renounce heaven. Because I want God to look exactly like that, man. When I die, when I shuffle off this mortal coil underneath four fat strippers and a lump of cocaine, when I die and I get called up through the pearly gates, I want God to look like that guy. I want him riding a rainbow like a motorcycle with that, come on, come on! <laughs> In heaven we roll on George gold, yeah! I'm like, oh, heaven I can get behind. I don't want to go to a heaven that's filled with a bunch of old Catholics going, congratulations, here's your tapioca and your enema, dear. Congratulations, you didn't enjoy yourself once, you didn't have sex or do drugs or pursue your dreams. Welcome to the bingo parlor that never ends with tapioca enemas. Congratulations, you made it. I want to be in hell with all the people who rot. Um, I do. <laughs> Gonna burn out, folks. Do it in your own funeral too. Um, <laughs> this is, I, I came home the other night. I uh, I have a I have a lovely fiance. She's amazing. She's ten years my junior, and as Dominican as Frankie is Puerto Rican. And one day she will stab me to death. I'm not saying that because she's Dominican or even Latino. I'm saying that because, like most women her age, she stopped watching sitcoms or cooking shows. Every time I come home after one of these shows at midnight, she's watching the ID network, and one of those shows, it's like, the husband was murdered 17 times. <laughs> like, did anybody here, any other guys here in this audience have a significant other who just spends all their time watching ID networks murder your husband? If that's the case, <laughs> run. It's uh, it's gonna happen, and it's always weird. It's always like the reenactments are always the worst actors possible. They're like, Jenny had a degree from NYU until she met Roger, who was a karaoke host at an Applebee's in New Jersey. He shot himself regularly and kicked her dog into her kids. You know, 
One day he fell asleep and she killed him with an axe. She whacked it 53 times and stuffed him into a McDonald's Happy Meal and put it in cement. And I'm like, watch my girlfriend be like, oh yeah, mama, what should you do next? What should you do next? Is he a comedian? Because I'm fine. Oh, it's happening, man. It's fun. <laughs> if, she, if she knew I did that accent for her, first of all, she didn't sound like that at all, man. She would kick like, you Like, oh, exactly, yeah. She literally, like, she sounds like... She, she does not sound like that at all. But I, you know, I learned that. I learned that talking about that because I, I used to listen to my parents. Everyone listen to your parents tell stories about each other and they, their imitation they do of each other sounds nothing like each other. Like your dad will be like, so your mom's like, <laughs> and I'm like, my mom's not Seagull dead. But in, in his eyes, after 60 years of marriage, that's what she sounds like. I love my dad. My dad was amazing. My dad was an amazing character. My dad was like a 300-pound Irish immigrant who floated over with 27 potatoes after World War II and uh, tried to be a lot of insurance. Anybody here has ever like, met my dad? It's amazing. My dad, is he looks like John Goodman, but he sounds like Liam Neeson right about before he drinks like a bottle of uh, whiskey and kills a bunch of terrorists who took his daughter. He, uh, but uh, one of my favorite memories about my dad is that every Christmas my dad would get, uh, you know, a little banged up like most Irish people do. And uh, he'd love to tell the story about how he and my mother met. And it's a beautiful story. I mean, I will say, for whatever I joke about my parents, they've been married for 63 years. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. May we all be so lucky. So my dad would sit there in front of the fireplace in front of me and my six brothers and sisters. And we'd be like, Dad, tell a story about how you met Mom. My dad would be like, okay, boys, I'll tell you a story. All right, here it goes, you know, like me. So the year was uh, 1959, and me and my 27 brothers found out they were giving away jobs and possibly vaginas in Brooklyn. So we took, we took 27 potatoes, and we carved them into canoes, and we went across the Atlantic Ocean in search of employment and possibly a hand job from a fat redhead named Molly, you know what I mean? Halfway across the Atlantic Ocean, we ran out of alcohol and food and supplies. And we had to eat me brothers Patrick, Michael, and Peter. Which is why I named your sisters after them. And I'll never forget my first day of working at the dirt, dirt punching factory in Brooklyn, which was a job in the 50s. I, uh, I remember my boss sent me to do the bank to do the payroll because I was the only Irishman on his whole crew that had all ten fingers and could count when he was sober. And uh, I remember I'm standing in line at the bank, yeah, with me pay and I'm ready to do me checks. And as I'm standing in line, I looked at the teller behind the counter and she was the most beautiful woman I'd ever seen in my whole life. She had red hair and green eyes and an ass she could put a Guinness on. And I remember thinking, how could I pitch the woo to such a princess? How could I do that? So you know what I did, boys? I did what every needle dick Irishman's done for a thousand years. I turned over the bank statement and I wrote a love poem on the back of it. It said, hi, diddly die, your eyes are like green clovers, blue diamonds and purple horseshoes. <laughs> yeah, diddly die. Yeah. I'll lick your pussy like it's made of Jameson No, he did not say that. He did. Sorry, that was that was bad, and I should have said that. Um, but uh, she did. He did actually write a beautiful poem, and she still has it pressed in a book. And when he took that poem on the back of that check and he pressed it under the, you know, she must have thought he was robbing the place. He pushed the he pushed the check underneath the partition. And he was like, turn it over, love. And she must have thought he was like robbing the place. He's like, ah, uh, this isn't a beer guy. It's C four, and I'll blow your boobs off if you don't put the money in the box. The uh, no, I'm just kidding. Why am I heckling my own ads? I don't know. I'm bored. <laughs> so next to us. And uh, <laughs> so <clears throat> what happens is, dad pushes the check forward. Mom takes the check. She turns over, she reads the actually beautiful poem my actually amazing dad wrote. She read it, it moved her, she looked up, and for the first time my parents' eyes met, and my dad said to her, and this is the absolute truth, folks, my dad said, my name is William James Lynch, and I'm from Donegal, Ireland, and you're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my whole life. Could I please take you to dinner, love? 
And 63 years later, I'm the youngest of his six kids telling that story right now in Plain, uh, Fort Plain, New York. And I think that's cool. I think it's all right, man. I don't know how funny it is, but it's, it's pretty cool. You young, you young cats, you young millennial cats throwing your dicks all over the internet. Like, what kind of story are you going to have to tell your cybernetic grandkids in 2075 when they're like, Grandpa, how did you meet Grandma? Like, what are you going to say? What is going to be your romantic story? Are you going to be like, well, I'm gathering around children, and I'll tell you. I was in a bar in Fort Plain called the Wrath of Grapes, and nobody would fuck me. Not even a hand job from the chick behind the Wendy's with the meth teeth and the pigeon toes. No, it looked like I was going to go back to my apartment in Newburgh for... For Tostitos, Pizza Rolls, Xbox, and a Harvey Jerkoff slash Cry. Back in 2023, we called it Cry's debating. And uh, it looked like it was curtains for me and my penis, but luckily, I had my iPhone on me. What was an iPhone, Grandpa 2.7? Well, I'll tell you, children. The iPhone was a miracle back in your grandpa's day. It was a computer and it had, it had a camera and it went on the internet and it did all sorts of amazing things. Mostly it helped us get laid. <laughs> How was that, grandpa? Well, we would go on things called dating applications in order to have sex. Yes. We would use the internet to get laid because most of our mothers were alcoholics and we all had a wee bit of autism. So we realized that uh, a rando swipe and a fuck is so much better than eye contact and a soul. <laughs> so I would go on to this Tinder app and I would swipe and swipe and swipe through photograph of ho after ho after ho after ho after ho after ho after. Come and get your love. 527 times I swiped. Oh, swipe though I might, I simply couldn't find a hoe that was DTF. Luckily, on swipe number 978, I swiped on a hoe, and oh, what a hoe she was, children. She was beautiful. She was wearing a rainbow tube top with one of her tits hanging out. It looked like her nipple was directing traffic. She was bent over a Ford Fiesta in a, in a trailer park outside of Chatham. And uh, she was wearing a pair of Daisy Dukes. And, and just over the crack of her behind was a tattoo that said, Anything goes. And I like show tunes, girl. So I swiped to the right, don't you know? And because she liked men who looked like Drew Carey's corpse, she swiped to the right. <laughs> 27 minutes later, we were having sexual relations in the Taco Bell off the Tacoma. I'm not saying that we were having sex in the front like animals, we were having sex in a handicap stall like two lovers in a Shakespeare poem. And I remember at one point as I was banging away at her from behind, at one point she turned around and for the first time our eyes met and she looked <laughs> And she looked at me, and I looked at her, and we do. We just do. She wasn't pressing charges. <laughs> and that's how your father was born. <laughs> Folks, my name is Sean. Let's give you back up. Sean, thank you all so much. You guys are awesome. God, thank you for showing up. All right. You've come to take me home.